Hello everyone, this is Dave Short and I'm the Oklahoma PBL President and I'm very excited to be with you today as part of the 2014 PBL Pro Tips video series. This is an exciting opportunity for you to hear from many of the country's best student leaders and today we are interviewing the wonderful and the glorious Katie Clark. Well, who's thank right here. You. <laughs> and uh, we just want to let you know that we really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, this year's PBO Pro Tip Series, we worked very hard to make sure it is a part of the FBLA PBL week. So we're going to be having videos all week long. Uh, we have about 20 different guests that are going to be here sharing your questions. Uh, and you can follow all of this action on Facebook at facebook.com slash PBL Pro Tips. You can submit your questions, suggest a topic, have anything specific you want us to cover, put it all there. Uh, but let's go ahead and get right in with our guest who is the Mountain Plains Region PBL Vice President. And she is uh, a longtime PBL rock star, Ms. Katie Clark. How's it going? Good. Um, sorry I'm a little wrapped up. It's a little cold today. <laughs> I think it's cold everywhere, right? I mean, we're, I think we're, hearing, so. of, we're hearing of the cold sweeping, the polar vortexes. Yeah, and I, I uh, hear the storm that's hitting us right now is about to hit Oklahoma later. So. Yay! Okay. So excited. Not yeah. really. Uh, bummer. Well, I have a bit of a tradition in the PBL Pro Tip series of asking our guests to kind of go down memory lane with us and talk about the way you got into PBL and how that all came to be and then we'll follow up that question with how did you get to National Officer Katie Clark who is now the Mountain Plains Vice President. Awesome. Um I just want to first say thank you again for having me on the Pro Tips series. I was on it last year and was absolutely fabulous time and meeting everybody from across the nation. So this is a really good way to meet people from outside of your state as well um, or listen to them talk that you may have seen their posts on our Facebook or our Twitter pages as well. So thanks again for this opportunity, Dave. Um, I started my PBL career um, six years ago at Colorado Mesa University, which is um, now a four-year school here in Colorado. I was new to campus, and I was about a semester into my um, schooling over there after transferring from Denver out there. Um, was just very excited to get onto campus and to meet new people and to experience new things, as any college student really would, I think. Um, met a person that was in the club, and he really got me involved in it. Um, really had a great time, had never been to California before, so that was definitely a selling point for National Leadership Conference. Um, last time it was in Anaheim, not this past summer. And it was just amazing. I made um, top five in an event my first year out and just got hooked in it. That competitive spirit in me that I had in high school playing soccer for 18 years that just really hooked me back in again. So. Really great time out there, experienced really great um, social events that we had planned. Some of the biggest ones that we did were a golf tournament and then an executive panel dinner with a silent auction involved with that. Um, and then due to some events, I had to transfer back to Denver, so I had to go back home. Um, ran to be a state officer, did reporter for a year, and then made president the year after, and also serving my current term is the third term as um, Colorado State President as well. So I hold two oh. different hats. Um, <laughs> I cool. ran to be a national officer actually last year in San Antonio and lost to the great um, Peter Ron. He's fabulous. So no hard feelings there, of course. Um, but definitely wanted to try again and did it and definitely learned a lot from my first campaign of how to actually run a campaign. I've never done that before. So took the notes from San Antonio and transferred them to Anaheim and luckily met 
some great people who were going to be on my side that week and got voted in. So it was definitely whirlwind time at Anaheim. As well, I want to go back a little bit and talk about your campaign because okay. I think if you were at the national conference in Anaheim this past summer and you saw Katie's booth, you'd have to say it's probably one of the most unique campaigns that any of us have ever seen. Why don't you uh, talk to me a little bit about that Katie in 3D? That's such a cool idea. It is. Um, one of my really good friends um, was talking to them about starting a campaign and they suggested the idea so me and my campaign manager just kind of ran with it. Um, really focused on development of the PBL chapters, delivering out messages as they came to me, delivering them out right away or um, month monthly updates um, and then definitely having the drive to do it so there are the 3D development delivering drive. Um, what I did for my booth is 3D movies are all the rage these days so kind of based it around a movie premiere. Um, my my banner had um, balloons around the edges. I had a red carpet in front of my booth. I had um, popcorn boxes. They didn't have popcorn in it because you can't give out um, unwrapped mm -hmm. food. That's one of the rules. And I can't really uh. individually wrap popcorn. That would, I think my hands would bleed doing all that, um, but gave out um, some beads and the colors that I was using along with 3D glasses because I worked really hard with a really good, with my really good friend that has suggested the idea in developing a 3D banner. So my wow. banner was actually in 3D. So you had to use the glasses to see it the right way, but unfortunately wow. the lighting wasn't the best, so you kind of had to do a little duck and weave action to try to find the right lighting for it, but it was awesome. I got a really great reviews back from it, and anybody who wanted to come up and talk to me, I was very welcome to it. Um, always have candy with you, especially chocolate. I learned that from San Antonio. I didn't have chocolate, and uh, had some people very sad. Big mistake. Yeah, I didn't get their sugar high very well, so. <laughs> well, I think what uh, you just said there was that you were about creating an experience for the people who visited your campaign booth. And yes. I know that there are some people who've already submitted questions to me, and I'm going to try to ask every national officer on this series about this. Um, the experience of drawing somebody in, because for people who don't know, the uh, national officer campaign is very very restricted isn't that right yes it really is um, there's no mention of it before the only people who know are within your state because you have to have state support always um, even during campaigning hours at national conference you can only campaign between certain hours and no campaigning outside of your booth area so if I went to the bathroom and ran into a girl that was asking me questions, I have to politely decline and say, I'm sorry, I can't talk about this here, but please feel free to follow me back to my booth, and then we can talk about it there. Um, we just don't want any um, privilege to anybody for campaigning, so we're all on an even playing field for it. Well, I can totally understand that for sure, but because of these restrictions you have to be very very creative right yeah. and so your your booth brought people uh, out of the normal you know kind of they have their blinders on going down the hallway and you were able to kind of break through that once they came to your booth what what kind of things did you have to say to them I mean how, how did you win the votes once they once you had their attention um, I got a lot of comments about how personable I was. Obviously, it didn't hurt me at all to be right next to Mr. Bo Cobb's booth, who was just phenomenal. He didn't do a normal table. He did kind of um, standing tables where you stood at it and kind of conversated that way. So definitely didn't help that I was 
I strategically placed myself next to him because I knew a bunch of people would come up to him. And I'm like, hey, you're from my region. Let's have a chat. And you just have to engage what they want, ask them what I could do to help them, obviously tell them what I wanted to do. Um, definitely being personable, smiling helps a lot. My cheeks hurt so bad after nationals, but <laughs> I mean, that's what we have to do. We have to smile and just talk to people and talk to as many people as you can. Um, at one point, I think I would have probably five people at my booth at one time, and obviously I can't talk to them all by myself because I would be talking to one person and one would come in yeah. and you just can't be rude and say, oh, no, excuse me, I have to go talk to this person. So I had great support for my state chapter that they would come and help me run a campaign. If I was busy talking, then they would step in, and sometimes they better they did a better job of uh, advocating for me than even I could. I think at one point I'm like, okay, I'm going to go take a nap, and you guys take it. And they're like, no, no, this is yours. I'm like, I know. I was just joking. I'm not actually going to go take a nap. But, <laughs> I mean, they did a phenomenal job of advocating for me and I could not have asked for a better group of people from my state to help me out. Okay, so here comes the meaty question about running for office. Okay. Let's just assume that there's somebody out there watching who has this idea of being a national officer. And being on the national team is a huge, huge responsibility. What are some of the things that you have found to be really the bigger, I, I wouldn't say burdens, but the harder things to deal with as a national officer? Um, I really think it's time management because all of us are students. The majority of us are going to have a job or two or three Um Plus, I also wear the hat of Colorado State President, so I have multiple jobs I have to try to carry. It's definitely hard a lot of the time to try to um, make a list of what I have to get done by certain days. Luckily, I'm a very good planner. My um, personal calendar planner is full of things that I have to get done and when it's due and when I work on it, I jot that down as well. Um, monthly officer reports can be very daunting, but I write notes to myself of what I did for the day, whether it be for my state position or my national position. Um, nothing is really hard as a national officer. You just have to really have good time management. And I think that the rest of my team would definitely agree with me. There are some times when one of us, even me included, can just be like, okay, just, I need a week off. If you guys have a question, I will get back to you after my week break because, you know, we're running 24-7 with all of our national duties. So winter break, what is it? Like, I have no idea because we're even doing planning and our yeah, projects then too. So we have to have me time as well. Well, as a uh, Mountain Plains Region Action, uh, you have a Region Action Council. Um, I'm a part of that. I'm, I'm proud to serve underneath you, ma'am. Um, <laughs> um, all of the region vice presidents have an action council, and that means what exactly? Basically, it's what the vice president decides to do with it. Um, my committee, specifically, is split up into three different committees as well as I have an executive assistant. So what um, Ms. Brashana Briggs does, that's who my executive assistant is, anything that I need, I just call her up or text her and, hey, can you go ahead and get this ready for me? Or can you hop on this call with me and take notes? Um, Brashana's going to be on the Pro Tip Series later on this week. Oh, so good. She'll she's, be here. She's really great. She um, is also a virtual chapter member at the University of Kansas. Um, what my other smaller committees do is really advocate for me um, trying to grow this region and grow the organization as a whole and asking what works best for them with it being fundraisers or community service projects or recruitment and retention efforts, really asking the members and advisors what works best for them. 
obviously we have four-year schools, we have two-year schools, we have technical schools. Mm -hmm. So it's really about taking note of that and sharing with everybody. Um, in my um, emails that I send out to the advisors that I send out every other month, I definitely include those in there and be like, hey, by the way, this was a really great idea brought on by this college of what they do for March of Dimes. This is a really great idea for recruitment efforts. Definitely sharing those is what is going to make the region and also the whole organization grow as a whole. Um, I know Mr. Glenn Gilliott's Action Council has many, many members on it and many, many committees and councils on it, and that's great for the southern region because they're humongous. They're our biggest region. So, you know, as many people that will help us as possible is what we're going to take. Um, we have so many jobs and duties as a national officer, and really anybody that wants to help, I know I welcome it. Um, so, yeah, I think it's just really what the vice president wants to make it and how they want to utilize it. Well, I definitely uh, think that you hit a hot word for me when you said you wanted to grow the region. Yeah. Now, I, it's no secret, I'm from this uh, enormous local chapter. And for the people who watch uh, my interview with Kevin Cox from TCC Metro, you'll be able to hear all about that. But growing isn't necessarily just numbers. I mean, so what are, what are some of the ways that you, as the Vice President of the Mountain Plains region, want chapters and state chapters to grow specifically? I want them to grow their active membership. Um, a lot of students will just sign up, just, hey, I can pay my fees, sign up, and put it on a resume. That's great. I mean, if you actually put the work into FBLA PBL, you'll get out of it what you're going to put into it. And that's what's going to grow your resume. Um, employers, I mean, we're all going to be looking for jobs eventually, whether it's sooner rather than later, but um, a person or a recruiter can ask you what you did in FBLA PBL, and it's really going to be sad if all you can say, oh, I paid my dues. Oh, nope, didn't go to any meetings. Nope, didn't do any projects. Like, Mm -hmm. that's just going to be the sad part. So definitely growing the active membership and being those members that go to meetings and go to the events and help recruit and definitely come back the next year and retain the membership from your local chapter as well as the statewide membership is definitely going to help us grow more. I know um, TCC Metro last year almost broke 500 members, I believe, and so that's great. <laughs> that's a lot. A lot, That's great yeah. membership, but really how many of you are actually active and doing those activities and going to a state conference? I mean, that says a lot about you in a lot of different ways, and that's going to get you to the national conference, which is where we all want to be, but, you know, we kind of got to go past state and maybe even districts if the state's that big, too. Uh, you definitely are speaking my language here um, <laughs> because... The thing that I am constantly preaching as the state president of Oklahoma is that if you are really doing PBL the way that PBL is really meant to be done, you are prepared for so many things in the real world that I don't think a lot of people give themselves so much credit for. If you've ever competed in a performance event at a state conference or at a national conference for sure, there shouldn't be a single job interview in the entire world that should intimidate you. There shouldn't be a single resume that you can't write or cover letter that you won't be able to put down for an employer that isn't going to blow them away, that isn't going to knock their socks off. So being an active member of PBL is better for your resume than just having it listed there, for sure. Right, and I think you hit a great point about the competitive events. I mean, we have a job interview event. We have future business executives that are 
just interview based. You write a cover letter, you fill out an application, you turn in your resume, and then you do the interview at the conference. You're interviewed by two or three different people. Obviously it's timed, but you have that amount of time to advocate yourself of why do I deserve this position. And I think if anybody is going to be a little timid about competitive event season, do job interview or future business executive. Those are two really great events to get your foot in the door and get practice of those um, live events where you're performing in front of judges. I mean, that was the event I did my first year at nationals. I didn't compete at it at state. I did all testing events. I was too scared to stand up in front of judges and speak. Um, I say um a lot. I just stand there. I mean, I'm yeah. not the most eloquent speaker, but my advisor believed in me enough to fill in a spot on this team for um, a live event where I had to go in front of judges, and I was shaking in my boots right before we went out there, and my teammates were just like, you got this. This is what you're going to talk about. If they answer any questions about your part, just go out there and answer it, and it was so great and life-changing. I definitely would not be where I am today if my advisor back then had not believed in me enough to just tell me that I was going to do this live event at Nationals. I mean, that's a big stage and big shoes to fill, and I was not ready for it, I thought, but she saw something in me that obviously she saw that I was ready for it. And it's great to have that support um, with, we'll keep rolling with this competitive event season topic. Yeah, um, for sure. the, we have tons of new events that are out. I mean, we have um, mobile. I'm really, yeah, I'm really happy about the new events. Yeah. Really we have mobile application development. Um, what are some other ones? Entrepreneurship concepts. I mean, if you want to start a business, go take the entrepreneurship concept test. It's 100 questions. It's multiple choice. I mean, what could be better than that than just take another test? I mean, we all do those anyway. So these events are geared to um, attract us to them. I mean, what do you do best? What do I do best? And go into those events. And what's really great is that there's just so many different events in FBLA PBL where we can really do what we're good at. And one thing that we really strive as national officers to portray is that we're bringing business and education together. I mean, and the events are a great thing for that as well because we're really putting what we learn into the classroom into practice. And that's going to translate into the real world, into the working world later on, is that we actually know what we're doing. We've not only learned it in the classroom, but we've practiced it and got judged on it and got feedback on it. So that's an amazing thing about the events, too. And I think you hit on something, and I don't know if you went all the way necessarily for my taste, but at our chapter we encourage everyone to sign up for the limit of what they can do. Yeah. So if you can do two events or if you can do three events based off of the events that you're doing, then do that. And sometimes we get people who are like, well, I'm only, I'm only a web designer. I, I don't have a lot of knowledge in these other things. Great. Take that opportunity to go into the test and learn what those tests are looking for. And right. then you have the opportunity to be prepared for those things. Find something that you're just interested in. I know a lot of people uh, in the workplace, when they are wanting to apply for a promotion or if they're wanting to apply for a new job, often get afraid of doing it because they're concerned about never having been through the process before. Well. So you apply yourself this one time and you use it as an opportunity to practice because next time around you'll know what they're looking for. So um, that's definitely my soapbox moment on competitive events. You don't have to be a uh, top level NASA rocket scientist level genius on everything that you compete in. Right, and I think you had a good point about not knowing, but the really great thing is with our competitive event guidelines and rating sheets, you kind of do know what's going to happen because in those guidelines, 
it lays out exactly what you're going to need to do, whether it's um, the guidelines for each event individually or the objective test competencies or even the performance competencies that the judges are going to be looking for. And take a look at those rating sheets too for those performance events because that's what you're going to be um, judged and graded on. And make sure you take a mental note of it and then when you're going into that presentation and that performance, hit those topics so that the judges don't have to think back later and be like, well, did they actually say that? Did they actually cover that? I mean, make those mental notes to yourself. We actually, there's a link. Um, I've posted it on my social media. I'll be glad to post it again this week as we're all getting ready for the event season of some practice tests and some practice questions and um, some topics that can be practiced on. I mean, practice, practice, practice. I mean, that's what we do for our regular tests is we sit there and we study and we go over our notes, we go over PowerPoints, if those are available, read the book again. I mean, use these things to go over your event and then you'll have no problem passing the test or getting 100% or, yeah, 100 points on the um, performance part. I'm, I'm in percentage mode, sorry. Um, but use these tools that are given to you and don't just go into it blindly. I mean, you don't really have that excuse of, well, I didn't know what was going to be on the management concepts test. Well, yeah, you do. I mean, ask somebody to log on to the computer for you and look at those competencies, and that's really easy. I mean, any school library has a simple management, marketing, human resource book that can help you with those um, competencies that are on the list already. I mean, we got to use our tools that are there. Uh, I love talking about competitions because for me, this is what PBL is really all about. I was initially approached for PBL based off of the competitions. My advisor came to me and, and did what I like to call the Top Gun approach. And, and I'm probably going to bring this up in every single interview mm -hmm. just because it's kind of like my, uh, when I was a young kid type of moment. Um, but they singled me out. They said, you're the best web designer that we even know of. Like at this school, you're it. You need to seriously consider competing for us at this event. And I'll be honest, um, building a website for me isn't that difficult. I can usually put one together in a day, maybe two. But I didn't know what they were looking for. And, you know, in website design, a lot of it has to do with what your client's looking for. So you have to go digging, especially for website design where you have to be prejudged uh, before the um, cutoffs. So I had to go into that manual, and I remember sitting down with this thick PDF, and I printed the whole stupid thing <laughs> instead of just the website design, because I was so new, I had no idea. Oh, no. Um, and I just sat there, and I just poured through page after page, just turning leaf after leaf of paper, looking at all of these different events, and I thought, man, you know, if you just even read through this and look at all the different competencies that we're testing and all the things that we're looking for, that in and of itself kind of educates you to be more prepared for whatever it is that you're going to hit when you're in life. And I mean, this website design thing for sure, it was, okay, you're going to build a website for your school who needs to get donations. All right, well, I was able to go right to work on that. And I did pretty good. I got on stage at Nationals two times in a row. Um, you know, <laughs> it wasn't that bad. But um, competitive season is definitely something that we really care about. And um, I'm going to ask, I'm going to kind of shift focus okay. off of competitive season just a little bit. Okay. Um, something that I think, I think that you really are able to talk about is connecting to the PBL family. Like, it seems like you, Bo, 
and Morgan especially are really good at connecting and being present and it seems like everywhere that I end up finding a PBL person you three people have already been there you've already connected with them what's the secret to being so well connected um, part of that as a national officer is definitely our national staff in our national center um, anytime that a person whether it be a staff member a faculty or even a student want to start a chapter at their school that doesn't have one yet they send in a request that goes to the National Center and the National Staff send us those requests. Um, one thing that I kind of pride myself on is emailing back really quick. Um, I have my email on my phone and it goes off in the middle of the night and I'm like, oh, I'll just get it to it in the morning. But I mean, it's always on my head to try to reach out to these people. I definitely know a lot of um, Colorado FBLA members with my time being state president. I've definitely connected with them a lot. And I want to educate all of the members and all the state officers on our FBLA chapter of what PBL can do and to continue on with this organization. I mean, one thing we're really focusing on this year as a national team is lifetime organization. I mean, you grow up with this organization and can stay in it for life starting at middle school. Definitely getting to know yourself better, know your community better, and knowing the nation better. I mean, we're in all sorts of different countries. We're in Guam, Virgin Islands, we're over in China. I mean, we're everywhere. And it's definitely being a good family. I mean, anytime I need something, I know I can call somebody else on my team and ask them for it. Um, all of us are definitely a family. I mean, we went through training in rest and kicking and screaming sometimes just because we're so passionate about things and so passionate about wanting thing, wanting items on our program of work that we were going to scratch each other out for it to be on there so that we could do that. Um, I mean, Perkins funding in March of Dimes was one of our big reaches this year. Um, Morgan can talk more about that. That's one of her little babies that she took on this year. I, I mean, you just got to have that close-knit type of family. I mean, at state conference, I always tell my members, okay, we're here at state conference. Yes, you're competing against your chapter. You're competing against other chapters. But once we get to the national conference, we're competing as a state against all the other states and all the other countries. We have to come together and be there for everybody. I mean, hearing everybody scream for me as I won my national position just from my state alone I'm pretty sure everybody stood up that was there and we sent about oh fifty or so members out to Anaheim this past summer and I sat in the back of our section just because I like looking on words of my membership and making sure that we're all there and you know, if somebody gets up, I watch them leave the room. I watch them come back. I'm kind of like a little mother bear. Um, but walking past our section alone in Colorado, it was just so humbling and heartfelt to me of all of the people that were there from my state standing up for me. And I heard screams from Oklahoma section. I heard screams from over at this section. And, I mean, that camaraderie, that family building that lifetime association, lifetime organization that we're striving for, it really hit home then. Mm -hmm. And definitely something that I've tried to carry out within my term as um, Mountain Pains Region Vice President is, you know, we got to be there for each other. And I've made really great friends. I think I'm really close with all of my Action Council members. I know if I need anything, I can contact all of them. And they know... I mean, that's the, my ending line in all my emails. Please, if you need anything, text me, call me, email me. Everything's on my phone. Like, just let me know. And I think putting that out there is letting them be comforted in the fact that if they need anything, that they can contact me day or night. I, my phone's always with me. It's my alarm clock, so I can't get rid of it. So <laughs> if you call me in the middle of the night, it will go off. I will wake up. I probably will answer. So, um, <laughs> nobody I mean, do that as a prank. Okay? No, 
I'm not giving out my phone number. Yeah, yeah, no, that's um, a bad idea. I think it's, I mean, the family that we come out of this with is something that we're always going to have. I mean, definitely I'm going to go on to the professional division, the next level after PBL, and that's going to be a whole new family I have to get to know and bring into my world and get into their world. And it's exciting to know that no matter where I go, even in the United States, I'm always going to know somebody. I mean, I have a really great friend in Harmon out in California. I know Karthik and Bo out on the East Coast. I know Miguel down in Florida. I mean, no matter where I go, I'm going to be like, hey, guess who is in your state? Like, let's go hang out or something. Right. right. I mean, we have to make those strides because without them, where are we going to be in the next five years without the people that we've sure. known and the people that we've already built these relationships with? I I think that really is something that with this PBL Pro Tip series I've learned and when I started the PBL Pro Tip series I was this new I had no idea who anybody was and sometimes I would just be meeting people literally 30 seconds before we turned on the YouTube and started recording and those people are now like really really tight friends like literally right now sorry for the nose itching um, literally right now I'm looking over at my phone and it's getting blasted by people who are excited and they're actually wondering if we're filming pro tips right now because last year we did all of these live on the internet as we were doing them this year we are editing some of them to make them more professional or whatever but we have so many people like you said Harmon Harmon and Florence and the entire California crew is gonna be on the PBL pro tips uh, that is a huge surprise I wasn't telling anybody beforehand but if you're watching this video you you now know that later on the entire California PBL team will be on one video together um, and these are people that I had not even met until we got into Anaheim and now I love talking to them. I love being able to uh, get on Facebook Messenger or, um, yes, I'm one of those guys, uh, Facebook Messenger, text messaging. Uh, Hedma Estrada in Florida, man, I talk to her like every single day. Um, and now we have friends in Puerto Rico like Wilma who's going to be on the PBL Pro Tips. It is this like global family to know that wherever I go, as long as I'm pretty close to the United States because I don't know too many people outside of the United States but if I pick up the phone and find myself in Kansas I have Roshana that I can call I have other people there in Kansas that I can call if I'm in Iowa I've got Kent I can pick up the phone and call him if I'm in Illinois I've got Candy if I'm in Louisiana I've got Catherine and Glenn and all of those fun people Tennessee I've got Warren it is this big family and that's something that I think um, you especially should be applauded for because you are one of those people who foster that relationship for people so thank you very much for um, uh, being so approachable like you said people were saying you were approachable and you really are you're, you're a fun person to be around and, and it's been great having you on the PBL Pro Tips again for the second year in a row. I'm very excited about that. And um, before we end tonight's uh, interview, because um, it's night, and this right over here is, these are my shades in my house, and you can see it's dark outside. Um, <laughs> um, before we leave tonight, how can people get in contact with you? I mean, it's you'd have to be completely lost of your senses on the internet if you aren't already connected with Katie but how can they get a hold of you if they are not? Um, one really great way is Facebook and Twitter. Um, I'm on there my personal one as well as my national one a lot. I'm really trying to post at least every other day um, stuff on my national page. Um, or if you need anything from any of the national officers you can always call our hotline which is 805 T go PBL one so two the number two G O PBL one the number one so um 
You can also get me on my email. I, like I've always said, that's something that's just always with me. Um, it is pvlmpvp at fbla.org. Um, Facebook, Twitter, email, our hotline is always a great way to get in touch with any of the national officers if you have any questions. One of us will probably pick up, um, probably not in the middle of the night, <laughs> although we do span over four different time zones, so what might seem really late might not actually be. So, um, yeah. great ways to get a hold of me, Facebook, Twitter, email. All right, so are we... Um, preparing for Nashville are there any can you give us any secrets about Nashville do you know can you give us any tips any last thing that you want to give us about Nashville um, it's gonna be fabulous fantastic and awesome um, we are gonna be in the Opryland Hotel I do plan on going to Crunchy Music Hall of Fame and Museum again um, really great attractions such as the Crazy Horse or even Bridgestone Arena you can go into. Um, the Opryland is going to have a lot of different activities and restaurants to go to. Um, I think um, national officers, us girls, we have our dresses already. So oh yeah, for those fancy, fancy dresses. Um, it's just going to be so much fun. This is my second time going to a national leadership conference at Nashville. I was there when it was there a couple of years ago. Um, under better circumstances this year, as I will not be broken and just out of surgery, so I won't have to be on crutches or a wheelchair, so I'm excited about that part. Um, it's just the atmosphere in Music City is amazing, and just breathe in breathe in the air, the good times. You might not be a country music fan. That's okay. We will all still love you. Um, might give you a hard time about it, but it's a great city. Just kind of sit back, relax, and explore some of it. So I'm looking forward to it. I hope all of you are. Um, I know Dave's excited. I'm go back. so pumped. So pumped. It's, I can't even tell you. It's a great city. National Leadership Conference is a great experience. So even if you don't um, qualified to go, please still come. There are workshops you can go to. Um, all of our events, you can still attend opening and the Awards of Excellence ceremony. You just can't compete, but it's still the experience of it, even without competing. I did compete last year and had such an amazing time in Anaheim. And it's all those relationships, so I'm going to say it again, all those people from around the nation and from around the world and maybe meet new people every day, and especially at a National Leadership Conference when we're all going to be in the same building. It's kind of hard not to meet somebody you don't know. So I can't wait for it. Well, it's been a real treat having you on the Pro Tip Series. And I'm like even talking to your little miniature person on my screen right now, which is funny. Um, like I'm looking down on you for the uh, um, <laughs> oh It's kind of funny. Anyways, um, let me go ahead and cover some of the things that uh, are coming up on the PBL Pro Tip series just so that you understand um, how we're doing this. We're trying to pre-record as many of these videos as we can so that we can deliver them in close uh, proximity to each other instead of having them be so spread apart like they were last year. We do have 20 guests this year and I'm not going to tell you everybody who's going to be on the Pro Tip series because I'd like to keep a few secrets. Um, but we do have uh, we've already had Morgan Malott, who is the Oklahoma darling, uh, the national PBL treasurer. Uh, we've already had TCC Metro President Kevin Cox. Now we have uh, Katie Clark, our Mountain Plains Vice President. And uh, coming up, we're going to have National President Donnie Iorio. We're going to have Southern Region Vice President Glenn Gilliott. We even have... Former Eastern Rep, uh, Eastern VP, Amarutha is going to be with us, which I am just jacked to the ceiling to be able to interview her. If you know her, she is such an awesome person to hang out with. And uh, so many surprises. I'm just having a lot of fun with this PBO Pro Tips, and, and I know Katie is as well. And um, we appreciate you stopping in and taking a look at our video today. And... Um, 
stay tuned to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash PBL Pro Tips to get a heads up on when the next video is coming. Until next time, I am Dave Short, the Oklahoma PBL president, and this is Katie Clark, our Mountain Plains vice president, and this is the PBL Pro Tip Series. Have a fun FBLA PBL week, and we will keep the good times rolling with our next guest on PBL Pro Tips. See you next time.